Um, Islam Salaf came to Purdue 41 years ago as a graduate student and research assistant at the Joint Highway Research Project. And he came, he, he's a highway engineer, he came from Cairo and uh, he wanted to work in the areas of payment, highway payment. We had a legendary professor at the time, Eldon Yoder, and uh, he was father of Pemmen Engineering. And uh, Professor Yoder was a very good friend of mine. So we, uh, myself and Professor Yoder, advised Esam, and he did his master's, then he did his PhD with me and a topic which was not in the academia, not, nobody cared for. We have already built our highways and interstates, but uh, time had come to repair and rebuild and maintain, and how to go about doing that optimally, how much will cost, was the trade-off, how often we should do, Nobody had thought about uh, that kind, those kind of issues at that time, so Salaf tackled that. Also, the resources needed, the energy and the uh, personnel cost, etc. So that's the way Salaf worked. He was here for seven years and uh, uh, master's PhD and also a postdoc. Then uh, he went back to uh, Egypt as a professor of highway engineering at Cairo University. And uh, then something happened somewhere. Uh, I'm not, <laughs> it was beyond me. So he got into public service. He became Minister of Transportation. And uh, uh, he did very well as a minister. A lot of problems of corruption and etc. And he had disagreement, he quit, went back to the university. He did a lot of consulting in the, in the process for not only, not only in Egypt, but also uh, throughout uh, the Arab world, <coughs> particularly in Saudi Arabia and, uh, uh, and the, that, that region. And then last time I saw, not, not last time, yeah, last time I saw, I saw him in Lisbon, Portugal, in 2010. And uh, uh, he and his wife, and my wife was there too. And I didn't know he would be there, but he was there. And uh, I had an International Road Federation meeting. We had dinner, and uh, he asked me, I asked what kind of things he's doing. And he said he was working on the academy, uh, uh, some, some academy of science. Yeah, academy of science. And uh, he's trying to push uh, or uh, encourage or get involved, or get, get uh, Egypt more science oriented. So, and also he said, I have to go back to Egypt. I was there some years ago. And there is a, what is that uh, resort area you have? Some, uh, <laughs> The, anyway, that, the, the, I, I always forget the name. Some say Rick or some uh, nice resort area. He said, so you have to come and visit us. So I said, okay, we'll do that. And then following February, early morning, I got a telephone call from West, you know, Wall Street Journal. It was March. Yes. Huh? March. Oh, it's on March? Yes. March. So it was still cold, February, yeah. March. <laughs> <laughs> I got a call and said, there is a guy uh, just become prime minister and see if there is a connection between Purdue and you. Can you tell? Immediately I was frightened that it's a daunting <laughs> task right after the last spring. I said, geez, you know, what is getting involved in? So anyway, so that uh, then uh, I tried to stay away from uh, him. Uh, <laughs> uh, then, uh, well, anyway, so Purdue invited him to come to the I2 exposition, the global development. So 
and uh, nobody at Purdue asked me. And I, I was out of the loop, I must tell you. So he sent the letter to me and said, what should I do? I said, well, this is an opportunity to come and visit us. So we've come, so he is here. I'm very pleased. I asked him to talk about, not very formal, talk about a career journey from engineering to public service. And what he does, he will tell you what he does and, and uh, uh, how it relates to engineering. With that, Esam. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you very much, Professor Senha. Uh, I really thank Purdue, and usually I say, you know, when I visit Purdue, last time I visited Purdue was at uh, 26, 2006. 2006. Yeah, where I was honored by receiving the Distinguished Engineering Award. And um, today I was telling um, my friends here that it's a mixed feeling when you come to Purdue, where you, you know, it's mixed between happiness and sadness. Happiness where you remember, you know, because I started actually my marriage here, and my eldest son was born here, and we have all these activities. Uh, although, you know, Purdue completely changed now, of course, you know, I cannot know the streets or anything. But, uh, and the sadness because I feel like it's, it's gone. You feel sometimes, you know, that it is already gone. It's a past. Sometimes we don't believe in past unless we feel that there is something, something happened that really separated us from the past. But anyway, 40 years ago, or 41 years ago, I came here as a graduate student. And imagine that uh, you come to a strange place because this was my first visit to the uh, United States. And it's, you are not coming for, for tourism or to watch out. You're coming for your future. So it, I was nervous. But really, I have to admit that I was met by, by, by people that uh, made my life more relaxed. Of course, late Professor Yoder is his... Uh, is a really great man, and of course my friend and my advisor and my mentor and and uh, a lot of things, Professor Senha. And I used to say that anything, every time I get an award like IRF award or uh, Distinguished Engineering or, or whatever, or even Egyptian awards from the Scientific uh, Academy of Scientific Research, I say and sometimes I send to Professor Senha, you have something to do with these awards, because it's a, it's a relation of embracing, actually. It's not a professor and students, trust and uh, teaching, and actually knowing how to do things. So anyway, that really makes difference, a lot of difference for a person. Like actually, I have one, one friend came to, with me. He used to be to go to Europe, and even he visited the United States, and he stayed for one week, and then he went back to Egypt for home sake. So imagine that all these things, you know, actually it was difficult at the beginning, but later on, as I said, with uh, Professor Sen and Professor Yoder and others, of course, uh, things were uh, uh, relaxed and then I could actually perform. Uh, I hope I was able to perform uh, to the expectation of my advisors. Um, I came back to Purdue to, in uh, 2013, 2006, I said, 2006, 2006 yes, I, 13 years ago, to, to receive the Distinguished Engineering Award. Um, and actually, I was nominated to this award by Professor Senha. And you don't believe it that Professor Senha talked, communicated with a student of mine. He's a son of one of his. Uh, students out of Gadallah, is it? And he communicated with him, and he sent my CV, and I for my nomination. And I just knew later on that I I already was accepted for this nomination. So I came here to Purdue in 2006. As I said, in 2006, Purdue was different from 
40 years ago. And now it's, as I said, it's completely different. But, and this is very important is, is although all these new buildings, I was telling Professor Serha now that I still can draw the map of my path from my home to, to uh, civil engineering, to general library, or other places where we used to take classes. So the meaning of things, actually, it is not, it is not the buildings or persons. It is a meaning. And maybe Friday I will talk about that more, but it's, uh, it's, uh, we should train ourselves to extract the meanings out of persons and things. Because, as I told you, when I come here and see Grand Street or uh, Purdue Union, immediately, you know, I, I don't care about the building or the street. I just came to memories how we were friends, we're playing soccer, we're playing together, we go and the hard times and soft times and all these things. So this is my first advice. Don't evaluate people as people or things as things. Evaluate the meaning or the functionality of, of them. Like roads, for example. The function of roads is transport people and goods in a safe, comfortable, and economic manner. That's it. So the definition, did it say that the road should be pink or green? It should be safe. So this is a function. So we evaluate the function, not the, the color or any other attribute. Um, I'll move now to things. I don't know I can, if I can call myself a dreamer. Yes, I'm, I'm a dreamer. Actually, I used to have, I have it till now, but maybe I'm busy now to write. But uh, I have a file like that. I call it the dream files the dreams file. I write my dreams. And believe me that a lot of my dreams, especially those that I thought thoroughly about them, they were all achieved. But the most important thing is about things that I'm talking now is try to see the difference. Don't follow the trend. Try to see the difference and take it, and that will make something out of you. For example, when I was in, um, in high school, I used to play soccer in a, the school team. And um, um, you know that in soccer, people at this age of high school, usually they, uh, they want to be either in the offense to score goals and take the cheers, or goalie, you know, so they can and then get the cheerleaders and things like that, okay? But actually, the, the train, the coach, he selected me to, to play in the middle, in the middle. So the middle is, is all what he does actually is, is to give, is to help others. So I played, I accepted that. And I like that, although my, my and when we play in the club or whatever, I used to play as offensive. Uh, I, I was a good header, by the way. So, <laughs> yeah. So, um, so I played. when I played in this position, they saw me in one of the greatest clubs. I'll mention the name. I know that Dr. Ayman knows the Zamalek. But I'm, I'm a Halawi, by the way. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but no, I'm, there's two two main clubs there, the Malik and Ali. I'm, I'm with Ahli, but this guy, the Malik, he, he said, we need a guy like you to play in the, in the middle because everybody wants to play a goalie or offensive. And I was about to be, to be there, but of course, you know, when I uh, joined Faculty of Engineering, then uh, uh, things were very difficult uh, for me to... to to be a professional soccer player and an engineer. But anyway, the message here that, that it was something different, not, not the trend. And that was the, the cause of success. The other point is, uh, 
when I graduated, everybody in, um, like we have a senior project. Most of the top people, uh, they want to join structural engineering as a graduate instructor or, uh, or soil engineering. Again, my advisor who taught us transportation or highway engineering, I, I loved him very much. So he said, I want you to be a graduate student with me. Actually, he gave up three graduate instructors to, to let me in because he was not allowed to take more than one, but he has three, so that happened. Since then, you know, actually, I started to go through this highway engineering and, 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 and I believe that if I, if I was, if I decided to go to structure or, or, uh, or uh, uh, soil mechanics or uh, uh, things like that, I wouldn't be successful. So again, it wasn't, again, it's a trend, but actually was the cause of a lot of, I believe, achievements that I did, you know. I hope that uh, uh, it's, uh, there are achievements, but people say that. Um, when I came to Purdue, as Professor Senna has said, Research at that time in Egypt and also to some extent here was in traffic, go traffic counting and things like that. And in pavements and materials, you go to the lab that was 41 years ago, go to the lab and break samples and things like that. That was the major. However, the issue of maintenance, again, it was suggested by Professor Yoder and Professor Sinha. And it was very strange. It's again, it's a trend. Let me, let me, let me tell you that when I, uh, in my way back to home, after I finished and as I finished postdoctorate, I went to say hi to the guy from Indiana Department of Highways, Clay Whitmire. Yeah. And he, he was a very close friend of mine. But he said, Isam, I want to tell you something said what when you came the first time and asked me about the maintenance files because files and data and things like that he the the manager he said what this dumb foreigner want from maintenance files nobody asked about that okay so he said that that was the you know but he after that he helped me a lot and we were talking about my my trips to different places in, in, uh, in Indiana, different counties to get data. Actually, I traveled five hours to get data for half an hour meeting with foreman, for example. So that started the maintenance, routine maintenance, and of course, the relation to energy, how to take decisions, how to put priorities to save energy, because energy was at, time, at that time was still a very hot topic and then from maintenance to maintenance management to pavement management to uh, asset management all that happened and I, 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 and I tell you and I'm not lying I'm not my, my intelligence do you know is just a medium IQ is medium I believe so but really what happened that I was very unique in Cairo University to deal with this subject pavement management, how to mix the technical points with management unit decisions, be not, not to wait until the pavement is, is broken and do something, how to, how really to look at, the, uh, to look at the network, not at piece by piece as it happened. So it's not really because I'm good, but actually because somebody guided me and made me select a, a, a branch or a topic or a speciality that really wasn't in the trend. And again, thank Professor Senha for that. Um, and when I came back, and I, actually, I have 160 papers, most of them in the area of maintenance and maintenance decision making and the effect of delaying maintenance and all these things. Most of my awards 
are actually related, related to that. So imagine for some point that I followed the trend. I followed the trend. Then actually I, was, I, I, I will be normal. But I, I tell you, I'm a dreamer. I, I cannot be normal. So, uh, so again, this is something that you should consider. Consider that don't be fooled by the trend. It's a, try to see different uh, lights. Um, by the way, I did not set him up to mention me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know about that. <laughs> Maybe the last thing here, again, this, this is speciality, before I leave it, I was, the first time it was introduced to Egypt, in Saudi Arabia, and maybe in the United Arab Emirates. I'm talking about early at that time. Not because I am super, no. Because the, the, the issue was new. Nobody actually dared to leave the known, the very well known issues of breaking samples and things like that, and traffic counting. Not now, now there is modeling, there is a lot, a whole lot of things, but at that time, and go to something that really people, they don't know anything about it. So that was actually make, later on, make me be chosen to be advisor and be uh, teaching in other universities, other than Cairo University and so forth. Um, I know that politically, what really, as Professor Senna said, you know, he was, uh, was uh, Surprised to, to 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 hear that I was I was selected as uh, a minister of transport, for example. It it was for me. It was very simple. I selected to be a, a person who working in science, but I can simplify it and reach normal people, reach the common people, and that's why my selection was actually based on like a decision from the normal people. And I personally didn't expect that. Actually, I was in, in United Arab Emirates. I came two days to celebrate my birthday with my family and they called me. But when after that I knew that it was actually the desire of even people of the Ministry of Transport because at some point of time I was advisor to the Minister of Transport. So people, poor people, normal people, common people, it's very important. Sometimes just dealing and giving time and giving effort to normal people, it's sometimes, I feel like it's again is a trend. So again, this is something that when, when you do things again is the trend, you, you may get really a chance to, for success. Uh, well, also I talked about uh, dreams. Um, as I said, I dreamed to be a soccer player and I was selected. I dreamed to be an engineer and I, I have a lot of effort and I went to faculty of engineering. I dreamed to be graduate instructor. And as I told you, I was selected. I dreamed to be a professor like my father, my late father. So I worked hard. I came to Purdue. I have all these factors that I told you, and I became professor. After I became professor, I wanted to, to, to go in, in to spread my knowledge outside. So I went to some uh, outside Egypt universities and, and the authorities, actually. After that, I was dreaming of actually serving my country. I, but, you know, just, just dream. I never imagined that serving my country have to be minister or prime minister or whatever. But actually, what happened that this dream by itself, this desire by itself, that makes this dream becomes true and I became minister. And it was very difficult periods, whether minister or prime minister, extremely difficult. But what I'm saying that there is... Um, I don't know if you know Paulo Coelho. This is a good writer. Yeah, he says that 
in his book that if you work hard towards something, this something will move to you. So if you dream that I want to go here, things will, will you know, will evolve and interact at, and it, it, you will feel that this thing will come to you. And this is actually a lot of philosophers say that. So again, it's, uh, it's, it's, um, it's when you dream, faithful dreams. Sometimes we have faithful dreams, which you dream and you fall down and up, fall down and up, and several, until you, dream, you, such, you fulfill it. There is normal dreams that you dream, and with the first difficulty, you stop. And we have ugly dreams, which is only dream. You don't work. So if you dream faithful dreams, sit, write, I want to do that. And there will be some problems, just write it. And believe me, if you work very hard for it, you will, will achieve it. Okay. Um, now what I'm doing in Egypt, I'm, uh, I'm still professor in uh, Faculty of Engineering at Cairo University, but as I said, due to my schedule, I, I, I cannot take regular uh, teaching schedule. So I'm only there to maybe supervise uh, math and PhD degrees, and of course offer some general uh, lectures. Uh, also, I'm um, uh, chairman of the board of, of uh, a consulting firm. It's working in uh, engineering. It's a general one. But maybe the most successful branch we have is asset management. Try to, to connect the, the 41 years ago when I just was, go, went to the maintenance and it was evolved to be to the asset management, especially in Arab countries. We have several projects in other countries and of course in Egypt maybe we have just normal design and supervision. But the most successful area our company has is in the asset management, road asset management. Um, also, I established an NGO called Chara Foundation for Sustainable Development. And um, of course, there is a lot of things about sustainability. Actually, our slogan is sustain sustainability because sustainability, sometimes people look at it as something that we do. Actually, it's a way of life. Sustain the sustainability. And for me, of course, the, the pollution, emissions, and all these things, green, all that is, is, is at the heart of, of sustainable development. But for me, sustainable development is to preserve the functionality with least cost on community and nature. For example, when we have, in, in my dissertation, we have how the decisions of maintenance, how the maintenance decisions are put in a priority to minimize energy consumption, for example. So actually the issue here is to preserve. The word maintenance, by the way, maintenance is doing things, but preserve is a function. It's a goal, is to preserve the functionality of whatever building, road, um, uh, meaning, some meaning, whatever. So that's what we're trying to, to, to do through the Sharaf Foundation. Of course, we have international relations and things like that, but I have a lot of, of uh, public um, uh, lectures. All of them are just for, for common people who are trying to simplify things uh, about, um, about belonging to your nation, to your country. This is very important too. Um, Maybe the last thing that we're trying to do also in, in this Shara Foundation is um, the world moves by two things, innovation and justice. Innovation to better utilize our resources and justice to better distribute the return. 
otherwise there will be unbalance. But let me give you an example for how to use our resources, better use our resources. Something I'm sure that all of you knows that, uh, uh, for example, if you have a toll, toll station, road toll station with four lanes, in, in some peak hour, there will be queue. So the immediate solution is to make the eight lanes, make it 10 lanes. The other one is actually keep it four lanes, but you have the smart card. Now everybody has the smart card that can actually take and then send you the money. Later. So as if you add capacity, but you actually improve the functionality. So this is the better use. Innovation is better use using the, 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 the available resources. And again, as I said, it's very important to be combined with justice. Otherwise, the gap will be more and more and the world will be suffering from a lot of things that we, you, you see now. Um, maybe that's um, um, all what I want to say in informal way to you. Um, I hope that I, uh, I could uh, convey to you some messages for you, for you, especially young people, for their future. As I said, um, dream, imagine. And because as Einstein, he said, imagination is more important than knowledge. Maybe it sounds strange, but yes, knowledge is what you know. So, it, so you know it. Imagination is your, your rehearsal for your dreams. Imagine. So that's people move by imagination. And as I said, the second point is try to see something good of non-trend things surrounding you. Uh, and that's it. Thank you very much. Yeah. But you're talking to engineers. So engineers, knowledge and innovation is easy. We were trained to do that. Justice is something we never learned. Yeah. So was it hard to implement your guidance? Yeah. You, you, either this, as an engineer or as a professor or as a pilot? Yeah, see, um, uh, this is a very important question. Mm -hmm. I want to widen the scope a little bit. Engineers are problem solver, but also the engineering thinking is, is actual how to put things together mm -hmm. to have a optimal outcome. So I was talking this morning about engineering and philosophy. Engineering is everywhere. Engineering is the most visible, visible and the most, um, the activity that has the most impact on people. People, all, us, all of us are working in science, but actually normal people, they don't know much about science, but they know about engineering when they see a road or building or, or, or whatever. So engineers, <coughs> are actually, we call them sometimes societal engineering. Engineers at the end of the day, because of their impact on the society, they have to serve the society. They have, we have to have apply some kind of philosophy for this job. Mm -hmm. Part of the serving the, the society, so engineers are at the end of the day are serving the society because the society actually review their work. Society, they don't review the science as well. They know not the scale. Or society, they don't actually review philosophy, but they review the, the engineering product. So part of, of, so again, engineering is responsible about the welfare of society. A good part and important part for the, for the, um, for the site is justice. So justice and other things. So you cannot really separate because uh, as I told you, engineering is putting things together. Engineering by itself, it's not science, you know, but engineers actually use the science, basic science and things like that to put it together to produce something with direct usage of, of the public, of the society. So justice and other things are responsibility of engineers, not as a problem solver, but actually as responsible <coughs> about the society. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Anybody else? Yeah. What is the most interesting project you were involved as a transportation engineer? 
Or maybe he crowds the most. Yeah, I'll tell you. It's two things, actually. Uh, one of them is an um, uh, is, uh, uh, asset management system in, uh, in uh, Saudi Arabia. We did. And the other one was the transportation uh, planning um, or the transportation master plan for Cairo. That's a very, very complicated project. I know that if you visit Cairo, you will know okay. how complicated it is. Uh, so, so this I'm, I'm very proud because, in fact, when I was Minister of Transport, uh, we had two lines of metro, two metro lines. And I, I, I decided to have the third line because from, for this, from this study, we suggested six lines and say I, fo I, f I fight for, for the third line. And when in the, in the cabinet meeting, they said what? It came to my mind immediately. And the next meeting, I brought to them the outcome of our study and the pictures for the files for the files of the you know, data that we collected in this study. So again, whatever effort I did faithfully, it helped me to, to have a major decision to have a third line. Actually, it's still till now under construction. Uh, so the, these two, the other, the, other, the other projects, not maybe engineering, is, uh, is the Sharaf Foundation and, and um, the issue of uh, of common development, international development, global development. Because now, in my age, our interest actually moves from personal to community <coughs> to family up to the, the world. In fact, the world now is, is at great risk because of a lot of things. So what I'm trying to do is to give public lectures about, about how common development? We cannot have common development without common security, and we, have, we cannot have common security without common trust, and we, don't have, we cannot have common trust without common dialogue and understanding. So the issue now is actually to get closer to each other. Otherwise, it's, it's, uh, we have all the same destiny at the end of the day. And if we allow this gap to widen, then the collapse will, will, will reach all of us. Huh? You said that uh, uh, example you gave that you have four lane highways, for, uh, then you make it six lane highways. Instead of that, you, you charge toll, I, I understand. Yeah, like I, in ITS. But, uh, uh, isn't that uh, a problem for uh, poor people that they, they cannot pay toll, so they are left out? Yeah, but this is, it's, it happens at the toll station. So everybody goes there, he knows that he has to pay. And instead of pay it in a queue, he pay it. Oh, running. you're talking so about the, it's a toll road. Toll itself. road, yeah, toll road, okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, but yeah, because yeah. Uh, by, law, by law, you cannot make a toll road unless you have another alternative without toll. Okay. So, but I'm talking about the toll. Uh, this is just an example of how you increase the capacity without increasing the infrastructure. No, because this is the argument we have in this country, the congestion pricing, we, uh, you know, yeah. we talked about New York is just going to start. And the argument is that uh, uh, the many, many people, th those who cannot afford, they <coughs> will be left out. They will not be able, it will be only the rich people's. Uh, yeah, this is because of a little bit different issue here. Yeah. Hmm. Anybody else has any question or comment? Yes. <coughs> Could you expand a bit on the asset management uh, type of engineering that you are working? So what type of asset is the yeah. infrastructure or private assets? Yeah. It's, it's basically um, transportation asset management and more specifically is roads and bridges. That's really what we have a lot, but still the same concept. The nice thing about these systems is the same concept. All what you need to do is to achieve a function. And to achieve the function of this asset, you have to preserve it. And if you want to preserve it, you have to have rules for that. You have to have an inspection, you have to, to have follow-up, and, and, and so forth. So to put these things together with 
certain limit that needs a lot of priority and things like that. So it's the idea here is in your asset management system, how to keep your assets and maximize the, the functionality of the asset under a specific budget. This is very briefly, of course, Professor Senek and talked about that a lot. Yeah, yeah. But uh, but uh, that's that's how. Because the other thing is is in asset management, you have three things. You have to know what you have. The second thing, you know the health of what you have. Third thing, what was the treatment? It's as simple as that. Believe me, there is. We found in in a lot of countries that even they don't know how much roads they have, especially local roads and things like that. So they keep these things, you know, aside and they never be treated or maintained. The other thing, how you measure the condition. What happens that in a in, in, in lot of cases, they, they, they wait until it's broken. This is not maintenance. This is repair. It's different, you know. The third one, as I said, the treatment. Which treatment? When, doing what? Right? So it, it, all these things, you have to put it together and make priority, use linear programming or goal programming or whatever of this, uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, optimize. Or the yeah, operational research models. Yes, operational research models. So that is very simple for that. Again, I, I was uh, watching today the Dr. Ayman, the, the vehicle that we can actually moving with 45, 50 miles per hour and can you actually scan the, the road and you sit in an air-conditioned lab and you review and take and then decide what you do. All these are techniques but serving a special three things, knowing what we have, what the health of what we have and insist to call it health because actually that's what we do, you know, even in, 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 as an asset human being and what what are, what is the treatment? Okay. Mm. Yes. Uh, what are some of the proposed solutions that you had for the transportation problem in Cairo? Yeah. What were some of the proposed solutions that you? Okay. Came up See, with? it's it's um, um, of course there is a lot. Actually, it goes down even to some engine. But if you ask me in in five seconds, it's it's mass transit is the key because because mass transit is is see in urban areas when actually population gets uh, uh, bigger and bigger people and the cars private cars are actually competing for the space so a bus with 50 passengers actually equals say 15 20 vehicles so the space occupied by the bus is two and a half meters or three meters by 10 meters, 30, 40, 50 square meters. But the, the, the space occupied by 20 vehicles is much, much more than that, right? So when the peop population gets higher, then the, it's a mass transit. Other than that, it's, whether it's metro, monorail, buses, micro buses, whatever, but it still is actually is using the economies of a scale that that uh, and also it's a social justice because you can the, the space in the space in, in the city is owned by people but actually it's owned by people who have cars by the way I have car and I have security and everything but but I'm saying I'm talking usually when I talk I talk uh, keeping in mind the, the normal people so the space of the city belongs to everybody so it's better to be well distributed Any other question? Or? I have a question. Okay. So I'm just wondering what are the reasons made you change from a professor in an academic role to a, like a political figure? I, I can't hear you. What? Okay. Can Can you oh, yeah. repeat the question? I mean, what are the reasons like made you to make this decision to like leave campus? Like you previously served as a professor, right? And you changed from professor to a political figure, what are those reasons? Reasons? Yeah. Well, I, I, really, I, don't, I really, I don't know. But because <laughs> I, 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 I didn't have it, I didn't have intention at all. But for some 
some cases where actually I was able to fight some wrong cases. So people maybe thought that I'm going to be a good politician to serve them. But for me, I never, I never really, you know, dreamed of being, a, you know, in this uh, position. I, I, I dreamed to be public servant in any other capacity, but that happened. So it says that people, your, your deeds, do you know, actually is monitored and watched by people and they, they just selected me. Okay. okay. Yes. Do you think that you will have had greater impact in the long run from your engineering work or your political work? I get that they're intertwined. In engineering. engineering. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because engineering by itself, I believe I have a reward. And engineering thinking helped me a lot in my political duties. So I will say that, but, but in, 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 in Friday, when I'm going to talk about the engineering the future, actually a lot of scholars now, they talk about engineers as the uh, global citizen. A global citizen means a citizen that can solve the problem and can actually look at different aspects and can actually look more wisely to the futures. And I call it futures because there is no one future. Actually, there is different futures and one of them maybe the, 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 the will happen. So it's better to be ready. So who can actually... Um, um, uh, can like ex you know predict these futures someone who can actually solve the problems and also can look at things from different angles so that's why people started to call engineers as a global citizen okay so that's engineering affected me as engineer and of course as a uh, public servant also Well, I guess if you don't have any question, we'll have a reception and thank, thank you. you.